welcome back to Pages into the Past. So today I started working on my Regency bonnet and I know that in my Spencer video I said I was going to make it from scratch but I dug through my file cabinet and I found a pattern. Uh, I found the Regency bonnet pattern. It's by Lynn McMasters. Um, I believe Out of a Portrait is her current web page. I traced it out onto a roll of banner paper and then I went ahead and marked the size. I have a really big head and so I cut out the biggest size and and it said to go ahead and you know make like a paper mock-up kind of thing and so what I did is I just took the piece that, uh, that I traced off put it on my head for a test fit and I think that that's going to be a good size for the frame. I went with view B. Uh, it's a bigger it's a bigger brim but because I have such a big head I felt like I kind of needed it a little bit further forward than backward. So I will be using the same fabric for my jacket and I have a couple different thoughts on the buckram have to see how much buckram I have and then the mole or if I'm going to use a faux shape which is buckram it feels like buckram on one side and then it's got the the mulling already attached to it I don't know if that's going to make it too thick but I'm going to see what it looks like so I'll show you that when I get it all cut out okay this is what I was talking about it is a Peltex 71F single-sided fusible ultra firm stabilizer. On this side, it's almost like a buckram. I mean, look how stiff that is. And this side is soft. I don't have a whole lot of it left. So I was thinking I could do use this for the brim, the crown, and then the side, the circular side, that would give it a lot of stability and maybe some breathability. If I don't have enough, then I might have to pull out some buckram and go find me some mulling. And so, I'm crossing my fingers. All right, it looks like I'm gonna have enough I might use up the entire stock that I have, but uh, there's enough here to get this done. So I'm going to go ahead and cut it out. Um, the directions on the pattern say that for the buckram piece, to add three quarters of an inch um, to uh, most of your seam allowances. And so I'm going to have to draw that out and uh, get that drawn out before I cut it so that I don't leave myself short. Here we go. So now I have got everything cut out. I cut out my paper pattern with all of my directions, seam allowance notes. And so I used that to cut out the shaping. This is that Pellon. And you can see here I have it marked you know, the side piece, the center front, this will be the center back. It said to overlap one section, like so. And then it said when I was cutting out the fabric to do the three quarter inch um, all the way around, um, because what will happen is when you sew it together, this will be part of the seam. The only thing that I haven't figured out if I'm going to need is going to be more mulling. I might have to do some strips of mulling. Um, I have my millinery wire and it's fairly thin, but you don't need super thick to hold the shape of the crown. Um, it's mostly used for shaping. Um, I bought this at Costume College years ago. I think it might have been Kansas City Mercantile. Could be wrong, but that name, the bag that it came out of, 
reminds me of what they had a lot of their stuff in. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to stitch down the millinery wire onto the, the uh, we'll call it buckram, the covered buckram. I'm going to stitch that down onto there, and then I'm going to determine whether or not I need to use strips of um, a lightweight fleece to kind of go over that, to kind of soften that hard metal. And that's where I'm thinking I might be going with this. So, because I don't really want it to be seen, I want it softer looking. So, the directions, directions are really well written. Um, it tells you where to add your wire to the edge. Um, tells you how to treat your buckram, how to fold pieces and such like that. Um, whether you glue or sew a seam. Um, whether you're using bias tape um, and where to put your bias tape. So um, I really do like her directions because she does, she does give you some nice picture drawings as to what step you're on and what it should look like. So we're going to get started with that. I'll probably get all the wire done before before I come back and just let you know what I've decided on the flannel. So I am going to be stitching the, the wire on with my machine. Um, my presser foot has a hole in the middle to keep the wire straight. So and you zigzag over that as close to the edge as you can get. And um, that's what I'll be working on. I've done that numerous times, so I feel fairly comfortable with it. Um, so I might pop in and show you how that happens, but for right now, uh, I think I'm just going to start getting ready to cut my wire. I've got sewing group coming in about an hour, and this will be my project that I'll be working on. So happy sewing! Alright, I got all the wire added. Okay, I got all the wire added. I did a zigzag stitch along the inside edge. That way the wire is on the inside of the brim. And that way if I do any of the, the lining, shirring, pleating, it'll be hidden. I, instead of sitting on top of the outside of the brim. And then what I did is I zigzagged this center back seam closed and then the wires that overextended here, I just kept it on the zigzag and went back over them to capture those into the thread. And so the next step is going to be to attach the crown and the side pieces. And so I'll get back to you when we get that part done. Okay, so I have started attaching the top to the mulling. You can see here, lined all my side pieces up, and now I'm just going to attach the top, and then I'll attach the side, and hopefully it all comes together. Hello, hello, welcome back. Well, as you can see, I did more work. I got a little carried away last night. I was on a Zoom sewing meeting with a Costume College group, and I was working on the hat. And you can see here, that's the top of the hat. And what I didn't film, which I'm sorry for, is this step here. 
And so what it says is after, after you've attached the crown and you've sewn that down, then you put this, um, the side piece here, and you sew it up here, and it says to sew it as close to the top here as you can. So when I put my bias tape on, there's a piece that's here and a piece that's here. I try to go through the middle of it um, in order to minimize how much it was in the seam. You can see a few stitches here and there. Um, not too worried about those. And then you pull it down, and then you stitch the inside of it to attach it. So you can see here. So the next step is to, I believe, cover that piece. I've already clipped it, but you're gonna, we'll cover it, and then it'll attach with those clips to the inside. So it'll be, and then you'll attach it as so. And then around this area where you attach it, um, you put a band, whether it's a same fabric, contrast, complementary, some kind of a fabric there to cover that up. And then the next part after you've got that done is that you have to do the inside. So a few more steps to go. Um, I'm really pleased with how this part has turned out. Um, you can see the different colors with the fabric, so that's pretty cool. So, yeah, I'm gonna... Okay, so here is the inside of the hat. You can see the brim here. I took the two brim pieces and I stitched them together and then I slid the brim into place. And then I stitched by machine, I stitched it down, clipped my little pieces here so that they can be stitched in place. Then I went ahead and pinned it in place so I could see what it was going to look like. You can see here it's close to what it's going to look like. I have a couple of adjustments I have to make on the stitching, but most of this seam here will be covered by a ribbon to hide the stitching. The reason you can see the thread so easily is this color is impossible to match. I go with gray, it looks white. I go with purple, it looks pink. So I figure I'm going to cover this anyhow. And so I'll pull that up just a little bit more and repin it. And then I will be hand stitching the brim. And then after that we do the lining of the the this lining here and the top lining, so the side and the top will get stitched together, popped in there. And then I have an option of doing an additional lining out to, on this outside here. I can do an additional lining um, if I, because this is kind of twisted a little bit. Um, and that's probably because I didn't hand sew it down. If you hand sew that down, it probably would be much easier or better looking. But I'm thinking that a lot of this is going to be hidden by hair, and if I do a ruffle edge or a pleated on, do something pleated here, that it'll cover it up, and this will just be something that I'll be able to attach to. So, off to do more hand sewing! Yay! Okay, I've got the basic hat attached. Um, here's a couple tips for you. One, when you're pinning everything, don't poke the needles into the center if you're going to try it on because you'll stab your head. And two, when you poke them to the outside and uh, they have little little balls on the end of them, um, when you try it on and then you go to take it off, it'll, it'll pull all your hair and then it'll collapse. And so um, don't try it that way. So yeah, just be careful when you try it on. And uh, there's the basic shape my hat. Uh, what's left to do is going to be putting the inside in and adding the extra trim. So what's left to do now is to add the lining and determine whether or not 
Uh, I want to add extra trim to the inside, which I might just do. Uh, add trim to the outside edges, add the ties. I think I might even just add a covered button to the end. And then the big question is, because the jacket has these like leaves that are done, I'm just wondering if I should do a couple of leaves on the hat to tie it into the jacket that this goes to. So, got to think about that. I will let you know what my decision is here shortly. I'm going to take a break. My daughter's out visiting, and uh, yeah, so I'll probably work on this again uh, tomorrow my time. So, okay, here we go. Okay, so the trim I decided on was we were going to put ruching here, and then I will put the matching ribbons coming down. Went ahead and lined the inside. Same fabric, because I have a ton of it. And then I think what I will do is on the side here, uh, I've got a couple of feathers. I've got a peacock feather and a kind of a fuchsia colored one that kind of brings out the colors of the hat. And uh, so I'm going to put those on. And then decide if I need to do like a, a cockade of some sort on this side just to kind of balance out each side or if I only need it on one side. I haven't decided yet. So that's our process right now. After I get the ribbons added for the to tie it off, it's technically wearable. It just needs decoration. So shouldn't be too much longer. Almost done with this project. I just made some self trim and put just a rolled hem in here. And next what I'm going to do is we'll be attaching it over the top and bringing it down so that it'll be for ties and we'll then call this project done so we'll see you uh, when i put it on here soon ta-da all right here you go all done all right, so this was the Lynn McMaster's pattern, and I believe it's out of a portrait now. And this was her Regency bonnet pattern, view A, just in case you might be interested. Fairly easy to go together. I'm looking forward to wearing it with my jacket and my dress when it's done. So now all I have to do is make my dress. All right, guys, thanks for following along. And don't forget, if you like what you see, to subscribe, and we'll see you again in two weeks. I almost forgot to show you the feather attachment. I am going to keep this as a separate piece so that I can remove it for transport. And voila, it's done. So, all right guys, have a great one.